Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Hayden Newberry Fishing. Tonight we're back in the camper looking at the first two Elite Series tournaments of the year, the results of them, kind of what is going on here. And there's definitely some deeper than it's just a live scopers world now going on. You've got the product of the Bassmaster Elite Series really just kind of taking over everything the last couple of years worth of new guys seem to be the best guys on tour right now now i do think that you're going to see some things change as the tournament season goes forward because these first two events were definitely the the live scopers dream when it came to tournaments but really you're hearing a lot of people say that it's just it, that live scopers take over everything. Now all these guys, all they are is live scopers. There's no skill in it, these things. But something that people are ignoring when it comes to what's going on here is that all these guys have it. I don't know if you guys have watched some of the recent videos. There's actually a really good one by Zaldane that he went around and was pricing people's electronic setups on their boats. And totally I, I was surprised truthfully that some of the guys were showing it because it is kind of a uh, I would say I expected I guess more of them to be more hush hush about what they're running because you would think a lot of it or at least the the word out there is that it's all about the you know the setup these guys they've got their their specific setups and everything but truthfully along with that it, it's like 50 grand to make these setups it is a lot of it is the use of them and how good you can use them. The obviously, a lot of the guys were running thirty to fifty thousand dollars in electronics on their boats. A lot of people, when they're looking at this stuff, don't price in just all the extras that go along with it. But along with that is that all these guys have it. He 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 even has like fifty thousand. So like a lot of the guys, I think it was Bill Lowen was one that was really kind of surprising is that he has like 50 grand on his boat too it's not like just koyo fajita and and these younger guys have the only great live scope setups everybody's got them they're just better at using them now what makes them better is the part that i feel like a lot of people don't want to admit to themselves but they're just really really good at understanding fish because they have looked at so many of them there's a lot of guys that like bill low and I'm, I'm picking on him because he was just one of the guys that surprised me in the video that had so much but they they haven't necessarily i would say used it enough maybe they have and they just haven't got to that level but these guys have taken the time to go out with this stuff and understand how to use live scope as good as Bill Owen can swim a jig. They know when it's on and when it's off. The I actually just watched. I I I guess I've been following Zaldane's channel a little bit. I'm gonna talk about a few of his videos on here, but something he was saying because I wasn't down there on Toledo Bend. Obviously, he spent a few days out there looking for him, and I experienced the same thing when I was traveling around fishing tournaments and and everything else. Is that guys picture that you can go out on these places and there's just a nine pounder swimming there you go out way offshore on toledo bend the first standing timber you find there's a five pounder a nine pounder this and that and all you do is you just if you can if you have a live scope you just go out there and they're out there swimming the problem is you can spend days out there and not do any good and then you go up and do that thing that you know up shallow and you get a few bites real quick and you can you can gauge that it doesn't feel like you're so lost so if you spent the hours that you have throwing a spinner bait at lay downs or or throwing a square bill if you had spent that amount of hours with live scope and for some of these guys possibly more then you would be able to understand how to get bit on it more and it's and what makes you understand how to get bit on those things is because you know when it's not happening you live scope i'm the same way i fished a tournament a few days ago and i paid attention to my live scope too much i had one of the worst tournaments i ever had 
on a lake that I know really, really well. Actually, not one of the. I had the worst tournament I've ever had, and I used live scope more than I ever had in a tournament on that lake. I looked at it too much. I knew the lake, but I didn't know when to change because I hadn't didn't have enough experience with it. I didn't know that I needed to. Truthfully, I should have just turned it off probably. But these guys are so keyed in on what's a trash fish. If there's too much trash fish, if there's too too many striper in a lake that that they're not going to be as effective with it. If there's too many drum, whatever, they can pull into an area like you can with a spinnerbait, throw it a few times, and then they know this isn't it, and they jump in the next area. Where me, I <laughs> I go in there and I'm live scoping for two hours, and I'm like, ah, oh, I guess I'm just not good with it. It's just that I and and it's true, I'm not good with it. But here's really I'm I've got the tournament results pulled up here. It is wild what the results of these tournaments spit out here. And these are mostly guys that have qualified in the last couple of years. I mean, Lake Fork is eye opening. You got Trey McKinney, Tyler Rivette, Justin Hamner, Tyler Williams, Jud- Justin Adkins is is a a veteran on there, Stetson Blaylock. Then you're next up, Wesley Gore, Ben Milliken, Kyle Patrick, Cooper Gallant. Then you got Matty Wong up there, JT Tompkins, Kyle Welchers, uh, uh, qualified really not that long ago either. Um, Jordan Lee made his way up there, but we're down to 15th. Coyo Fujita, Will Davis. I mean, crazy. This is this is an elite series tournament on Lake Fork. You and to explain to you guys how tough it is, and this is truthfully in the tournament that I did bad over the weekend, it almost was helped my soul <laughs> that Lee Livesey bombed on Lake Fork because that it, that's shows you guys how tough it actually is to get bit on these places. People, Lee Livesey has this stuff, and he went out on his home lake against these guys and bombed meanwhile guys that had never been there before hardly caught 120 something pounds that's just their skill level with this stuff is next level and that's what the opens are are hap- what or what's happening in the opens is that to do that good throughout the country and not slip up in some of these tournaments that live scope plays in because there's only a few that few tournaments now that live scope won't play in it's sight fishing tournaments, and I'm talking, they're all on the bank, and it still is going to play in some of those, but at least you're, some guys have a chance that, that aren't on board with it. And tournaments like the Sabine, places that there are too many trash fish. Um, a, a prime example was... I. This last tournament that the Invitationals, which I don't think anybody pays attention to those anymore, but out on West Point, and there was too many trash fish. There was a, there's a bunch of stripers in that lake, hybrid stuff like that. It makes it very difficult to use live scope. So, but then here's here's the kicker. Because there's so many of these guys that realize they have to use it, now they're going to get beat there too. That's that's the big twist that. A lot of people might miss in this is that they know when to stop throwing the spinnerbait. They know when to set down the square bill. Only it's live scope, but I don't. So if they go out onto West Point, Bill Owen that thinks it's going to be a live scope deal is going to go out there and now he's handicapped because he needs to rule out something that he doesn't know how to use. So if these guys can sight fish and do that sort of thing, better than or better than you think that they can they probably aren't going to do it better than some of those shallow water guys but they will be able to rule out live scope and then spend more time figuring out the bank so it's it's a you're you're not going to stop seeing these guys on top because they have the key to that whole game and they can manipulate it and it's such a big player now that they have they they can see all that stuff, and you and it's, that's what's required to make it through the open. So every year, 
you see the last few years that these guys are this good, they're going to be this good next year too. So then you're going to have half the field almost is going to be just killers. And I don't know. We'll see what changes, uh, but the the tides have turned officially, it seems like, in in the Elite Series. the They're taking over and, it, and taking over in a big way. Thanks for watching the video, guys. See you on the next one.